Hello and welcome to another session of Global Spotlight Interviews. My name is Hiba Siddiqui. I'm the Global Youth Ambassador with MSU's Global Youth Advancement Network. And I'm here today with our guest, Mr. Chibuzer Agmo. Mr. Chibuzer is a guest here from Nigeria and he started the Sunrise Youth Intervention Organization in 2011 and he's here in the U.S. to promote his book, Rising at Sunrise. So welcome. Thank you, Hiba. How is it so far? I know we met earlier this week and we got to show you around MSU's campus. So, as I said in the beginning, you started the Sunrise Youth Intervention Organization. Yes. So could you please tell us a little bit more about what your organization does, what your motivations were behind it, and what your goal was when creating it? So, in 2011, I started the organization. Usually, the, I call it Sunrise, but the legal name is the Sunrise Youth Intervention Organization. And um, the, the idea behind starting this organization was to grant young persons access to opportunities because, you know, like I mentioned in uh, an event a few days ago, that Africa is a continent with uh, inequitable uh, access to opportunities. And I wanted young persons to gain access to these opportunities. So today, I, I can say it has reached thousands of young persons wow. in Nigeria, in Ethiopia, and the Gambia. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So what specifically do you do with the young people in your organization? Yeah, the core areas we focus on is soft skills development and vocational skills development because the goal is to make sure that young persons gain skills that would enable them to become employable. Mm -hmm. Employability is very, very important. Um, because Nigeria is a country with a very high level of unemployment, and it's very important that young persons are equipped with these skills to be self-reliant. So my next question for you is, in your book you talk about uh, your role as a youth mentor and a leader. Mm -hmm. So what uh, do you think is the most important thing to keep in mind when working with young people? I usually say this, that to, to work with young people, if you're a youth mentor, youth counselor, you have to um, have that at the back of your mind, that you're working with people who have enormous potential. Mm -hmm. for great propensity for great things in the future and you need to approach them with respect and also very importantly you also have to bear in mind that um, these young persons are delicate delicate in that you know you could make or mar them with your approach so um, dedication to towards enabling them make out something meaningful for their lives is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So respect is very, very, it's one of the things I say because oh, yes. when, when you respect young people, they, res they, they would accord you similar respect, you know, and, and they would be willing to listen to um, your guidance, your mentorship, mm -hmm. as opposed to belittling them and thinking that, okay, maybe you're a young person, what do you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know exactly, so, yeah. yeah. I just want to ask you, I know that every individual in your book is an African individual. So yeah. when you were writing this book, who was your target audience? Because although it is focused on African individuals and the struggles that they face, it is kind of applicable to the global audience. So yeah. was that something you kept in mind when writing the book? Yes, I wanted to create a material that would be globally appealing, mm -hmm. but also would speak loudly to the African audience. So now, why is it called Rising at Sunrise? You know, some people have asked me that question. Why is it called Rising at Sunrise? And I chose the color of sunrise, you can see, and then that's something I'm wearing too. Taking up responsibility at the onset of your life. Your youthfulness, your youth is the onset of your life. And rising at that moment is very, very key. This is the onset of your life. This is your sunrise. You are, you are being blessed with the abundance of opportunities as sunlight. Mm -hmm. You take advantage of it and make something meaningful out of your life. I, I read something uh, a while ago and it says that Africa is the youngest continent, meaning that we have about 70% of people between the age of 15 to 40. Okay. And uh, in the next 30 years, one in every four person you meet will be African. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's the youngest continent because we have more young persons on the continent. And it, it's important that attention should be given to young Africans because in a way I would say they're the future of the world, the future of the world's workforce. They're the future of a lot of things. I love that answer. And you know, similar to that, uh, my next question is uh, like how you talk about 
you know, everyone has to like get up at sunrise, it's time to do something, it's mm -hmm. time to, you know, make something of your life. Yeah. What advice would you give to young people who are in those disadvantaged situations where they feel like they don't have any opportunities or like they can't, you know, build up from where they are, what would you tell them? You know, so first of all, I tell young persons, use what you have within you. By the time you maximize what you have and you, you exploit, you grow it, you would be, everything around you will become meaningful. Training, one of the things we try to get young persons to do is to, for them to um, analyze and discover or make a list of the things they love about themselves. And that's why I mentioned I started the, the book with the first chapter, Positive Self-Concept. Mm -hmm. And it started with this quote by Lucille Ball, which says, love yourself first and everything will fall in place. So we try to let them know that there is a whole lot you have on the inside of you. It is your job to harness them, develop them, and then everything around you will open up to you. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's my message to young persons in disadvantaged. Yeah, my next question is, uh, you know, we talked about your past, we talked about your present. So mm -hmm. like you told us about the story, what is your 10 year plan? <laughs> what are your goals for the future? Yes, <laughs> that's a good question, you know. Yes, so um, years ago, I had designed a 10-year plan. I would say uh, over time, I tried to uh, tweak it a little bit. So um, my 10-year plan is to create a center that would um, increase access to soft skills and vocational skills development to thousands of young persons in my city, Calabar. And I keep asking myself, how can I make this dream a reality? And one of the ways I encourage myself is that I think all, all the things I'm doing, all the projects I'm designing, all the things I'm creating, step by step, they are leading me into fulfilling that. Mm -hmm. You know, So um, writing this book uh, is a way of extending that um, what I call it, extended that, what I call it, center, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. to young persons everywhere. And eventually I would be able to um, make something visible out of this, mm -hmm. you know, a visible, tangible experience of this, mm -hmm. you know. So I would call this book like, like the plan. Yeah. And then think of creating something that would exude the values of, of this book. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds like such a great idea and yeah. I wish you the best of luck. I hope one Thank day you. your dream comes to life. Yeah. I'd love to see it, you know, used in your area. I'm glad that you're, you know, giving back to the community that Absolutely. you grew up in. And I hope that expands to, you know, all over Africa, maybe all over the world one Absolutely. day. That'd be great. But Thank you so much for coming today. I had thank you so such a much. pleasure interviewing you today and learning so much about your book. So thank you so much. Thank you, Hiba. Of course.